Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. In today's story we have Ron, who is cheated by his wife of over 23 years and even going as far as suggesting an open marriage just to cover her tracks. My name is Ron, and I'm 53 years old. I live with my faithful companion, Mojo, who is a one-year-old German shepherd. I got Mojo after my divorce from my wife, Emma, who was 45 at the time. Despite the divorce, I'm enjoying my retirement, and I'm in a very comfortable financial situation. When I was a 16-years-old kid, growing in Alabama, at a family barbecue my uncle told me about the worst experience he ever had in his life. He explained. Waking up in the hospital after a back surgery was a big shock for me. I had been married for 28 years, and to my surprise, my wife had left me for another man while I was in the hospital. I had no idea she was already seeing someone else, and it blindsided me. What made it even harder to cope with was the fact that I wasn't aware of the groundwork she had been laying. She had sold our house, and I went from having a comfortable life with a house on a golf course and another one at the beach in Gulf Shores to having no home at all. I was left with nothing that I had worked so hard for throughout my life. Now, at 68 years old, I wish I had made better plans for the future. I've learned the hard way that save money so that one day money saves you. I hope you can learn from my mistake and take steps to secure your future. It's important to be prepared and have a safety net in place so that you don't end up in a situation like mine. That lesson stayed with me for life and was going to have a deep impact on my life in the future. After finishing my education, I began working at my father's consulting company. In just a few years, when I was 28, I became the leader of the company. During a conference in New York, I met Emma. I was instantly attracted to her because she was not only beautiful but also very smart. She worked as an accountant in a different firm. We began dating, and eventually, she came to work for our company as a new accountant. After dating for three years, it was Emma who took the initiative and asked me to marry her. I agreed and started planning our wedding. As part of the preparations, I asked Emma to sign a prenuptial agreement. She was surprised and quite upset with me for bringing up the prenuptial agreement. Emma felt that it showed a lack of trust in her and accused me of not believing in our relationship. I explained my perspective to Emma, assuring her that I trusted her, which was why I wanted to marry her in the first place. I clarified that the prenuptial agreement was intended to protect the assets I had acquired before our marriage. I told her that everything I built before marrying her would remain mine, and I could pass it on to whomever I wanted as part of my future plans. I also made it clear that any assets I acquired after our marriage would be shared with her. I also emphasized that as husband and wife, we would work as a team and share everything we create together as a team. So, our prenup stated that all my assets that I had before my marriage will remain with me. Any income that I get from that in the future will be with me. All money that I earn as an individual will be shared with my wife in case of our divorce. In case we decide to separate on mutual consent, we will separate our assets 50-50. In case one of us cheats the distribution will be 90 and 10, with no alimony. Emma did not speak to me for a week. She did not speak to me at the office and even did not speak to me for office work. She sent someone else to get some signatures. However, after eight days, I was working in my office and it was later and at 10 p.m., Emma walked into my office and told me that I am the only one left to go home. I told her that work is the only love I have. She walked up and kissed me hard and told me that she loved me and will sign any damn paper I throw at her. The atmosphere was charged and as we had emotions all G equals flared up and then, we did it in my office that night. It was the most amazing thing I had done in my life. We got married a month later and went on honeymoon in Paris. Europe was amazing. We even took a picture in front of Eiffel Tower kissing each other. We went to the Swiss Alps to ski. 
It was amazing, and my honeymoon was awesome. 23 years later, we have three kids, and all of them have moved out to get their graduation in different states, and by God's grace, all of them are excellent in studies. The house is empty with just me and Emma. We spend our day at the office, and at evening, we drive together back home and enjoy our dinner and wine and end the day in each other's arms. Once my youngest kid left home, Emma got a bit quiet. She no longer liked to have long conversations, and our weekly movie night was finished. I was a bit concerned and asked if we can go to therapy and get help before it's too late. Emma declined and stated that it is just a phase and it will pass and asked to give her some time. She even stated that she no longer wanted to go to the office. I agreed and I started to go to the office alone. Some days I went home early only to find her sleeping and at times in the kitchen cooking something. I was concerned and asked her to start working out at a local gym and get some hobbies. She understood my concern and agreed to go to the gym. After a few weeks at the gym, she looked better. She used to dress up nice and come to the office with some nice lunch. And after a long time asked me to stay back at office till late. I stayed back and we did it again in the office. I thought that everything had been sorted. Emma was now dressing not just nice, they were getting smaller and revealing. Her lingerie was changing, it was getting nice. I was happy and cautious as the same time. A part of me was happy as I was enjoying every bit of it and the other part was worried as to why this is happening. One fine evening I went home and she was sitting in the kitchen with a wine glass in hand and wrapped in a sheet which fall and she walks towards me with nothing on. Just the wine glass in hand. Yep, did it in the kitchen. To add to the things, she was filming that on her iPhone. I did not bother a lot as it was her phone. So, far so good. I was getting a lot of intimacy and I was happy. What was weird that she was filming that? I asked her why is she doing that, she said that she wants to see that when she is alone at home. I let go of my concern. I brushed it off as one of her new fetishes. I could not have asked for anything more in my life. All that was about to go down to the drain. What I did not understand is that I was being baited into something sinister. A few days later Emma dropped the bombshell on me. It was Friday evening and I was with Emma at home drinking wine after a nice intimate session. She asked if I have ever heard about open marriage. I said yes, I know, I live on this planet. She asked if I am fine trying that with our marriage. I could not believe what she was saying and my head just started to spin, I could not understand if that was the spirit I drank or her words that I just heard. I was stunned and for a few seconds my sight was black and then I got back to my senses. I said that I am a man and I will not share my wife. She countered that no one is asking me to share her. She just wants to go out and see what is going on in the world and wants to experience different feelings. She also stated that she is fine if I also go out and find someone exciting for myself. She was insistent that we should try this lifestyle before the sun sets on our lives. I was livid and just walked out of the room. For the next few days, I did not speak to her nor did I engage in any sort of communication with her. She came to my office and it was late night. The office was empty and she walked in and started to take her clothes off and engaged in an intimate session with me. I was a simp that day. Gave in to temptation. Emma recorded all of that. The next day she brought up the topic again. I told her to give me a week to think about it and asked her not to bring up the topic for next seven days. Now I was not concerned, I knew something was wrong. My wife is using her body to manipulate me into something sinister. I called my lawyer Dusty, well that is not his real name. But we call him Dusty anyways. He happens to be my childhood friend. I explained everything and since the dynamic between us more of brotherly, 
he laughed at me and berated me for being a simp. He said that my wife is manipulating me and he suspects that she is already cheating on me and the open marriage is just an excuse. He explained that since I have a prenup in place and it leaves my wife with almost nothing if she cheats, opening my marriage makes me eligible either for a consensual divorce or no divorce at all and my wife keeps screwing whoever she wants while I keep paying for her lifestyle. Emma was indeed smart. We decided to hire a private investigator. Dusty asked me to take Emma out for a day on vacation, while he would put cameras at my home. They would bug Emma's car and put her under surveillance. He asked me to install a spyware on Emma's phone. I asked Emma to show me our videos and she gave me her phone. I discreetly installed the spyware. I took Emma for a long ride to the coast and stayed there for the night. I got a message from Dusty, the job is done. We returned and now I waited for the private investigator to get back to us. It had been five days since Emma had the discussion with me. Dusty asked me to come and meet him in the office. I went post my office was over. Dusty asked me to sit and pour Jack Daniel for me. I sipped and asked what is the progress. The PI walked in and Dusty brought down the giant screen in his meeting room. The PI connected his laptop and started the so-called presentation. Emma is involved with her gym coach who goes by the name Rod. He is a former bodybuilder and is well known among women at his gym. He has been previously involved with other rich women and gets most of his money from these women. The PI then explained that Emma has been showering gifts to it the guy. He then explained that he was able to get a lot of data from my wife's phone. He explained that it began with small flirting and slowly moved to explicit texts and later to videos of Emma having intimacy with me. I was shocked. The videos were shot in a way only to show her not me. The evidence was overwhelming. I looked towards Dusty and he handed me an envelope and told me it's already done. He however, asked me to confront Emma at my home and do not show her the evidence and check for her reaction. I went home and saw Emma again with the wine glass in hand and only a sheet covering her. It was time to control and not give in to temptations. She walked towards me and I walked to the drawing room and sat down on the couch. She walked towards me and I asked her to sit down on the opposite cough. I asked her if she was cheating on me. She denied and asked if she should cheat on me. She did not stop and asked I want to see that happen. I was livid but controlled my anger and said that I know she has been cheating and just using the open marriage thing as an excuse to bypass the prenup. She leaned back and took off the sheet and said. So what I cheated? How long do I eat the same food? How long do I sleep in the same bed with the same old man? And how long do I pretend to be happy in the same old house breathing the same stale air with you? I spent years raising your spawn and now I want to be loved and I do not want to be settled with a worthless pile of slob like you. I want to be free. Your stupid prenup is a pain in my beautiful butt and I have spent all my life being a faithful wife and I cannot give up my dues just because of some stupid paper I signed. Good luck proving my cheating in the court and say goodbye to your 50% assets. They belong to me. I slowly got up, took out the envelope from my jacket, handed to Emma and told her that I will take my chances in the court and she has two hours to leave my house. She screamed and told me that no will ever love me and I will never get a nice piece of woman like her ever. I walked out of the house and told her that she has less than two hours and since I have money, I can afford dating younger women with better goods than her. I slammed the door and went out. I came back after three hours and Emma was gone. I broke down and curled up in a corner and cried. I had never felt that broken and lonely. Although I acted brave in confronting Emma, I was breaking apart inside. I was not sure I will ever recover from this. Dusty came in a few minutes later and we saw the video together. 
He sipped on his beer and laughed stating that this is better than Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith show, where she tells him that she cheated on Will with a younger guy. He said I made a better face than Will Smith. I know that he is annoying but he is the only friend I have and he has stood beside me through thick and thin. I wish everyone has a buddy like him. I called my kids and explained the situation and informed that their mother and I are getting divorced. They protested and I had to explain what has happened and they were upset. I was worried for them but I knew they were now adults and they need to get over it. I met Emma in the court and she was dressed elegantly and her lawyer looked sharp. Emma accused me of asking her to open our marriage and later backed out as I could not find anyone as I am not good enough. When her lawyer was done Dusty got up and presented all the evidence and even gave the judge a small peek on the videos that Emma shot on her phone. Her accusation was dismissed and the judge dissolved our marriage based on infidelity from Emma's side and also directed me and my lawyer to go ahead and execute the prenup agreement. Emma was shocked and threw a tantrum in the court, she accused the judge of selling out and called him names and to my surprise the judge did not stop her. He let her rant. She then proceeded to berate me saying that she raised my kids all her life and now she will be penniless and a loser. She stated that she just wanted to be loved and feel special. She broke down and started crying. The judge asked Emma to get up, he stated that. I tolerated your behavior just to understand why you cheated on your husband. You had everything, a loving husband, three amazing kids, who will make any parents proud. You had financial security and you could have traveled to any place on the planet in your leisure time. Feeling not loved is your state of mind and I see your husband made every effort, even offering going to therapy with you. You on the other hand went out of your marriage and gave into your carnal desires and even tried to trick your husband into opening your marriage just to try and bypass your prenup agreement. That shows your malicious intents to rip your husband off his hard-earned assets. Now get out of my court before I throw you in a cell for disrespecting the court. Emma was escorted out and I never met her again. My eldest son visited me a day later and got mojo with him. I always wanted a dog but could not get one as Emma never liked dogs. I was very happy. I have handed my business to my eldest son and the other two are still perusing their graduation. They too plan join him once they graduate. My eldest son informed me that Emma has checked into a rehab center as she fell into alcohol addiction and had to be rushed to emergency once for alcohol poisoning. It has been a year since my divorce and I know for sure that Mojo is one honest soul who loves me unconditionally. I spend most of my time with him as I have now retired. I have moved to a different city and I live right on the beach. Mojo loves the sea, and every evening he spends time with me watching the sun go down. Dear listener, if you have reached this far please click on the subscribe button. It will be a great help.